<laughs> Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to the Correct Views. Sam I.B. DeGangie doing political commentary for your second day, day two of two, for your uh, massive Fukushima update brought to you by StickerJunkie.com. Do me a favor, StickerJunkie.com. Let them know that, hey, I want stickers, and Sam told me you rock. If you let D-Lake know, you'll get a deal. StickerJunkie.com, bringing you the massive Fukushima update. And uh, I've, I've got four stories, rather than he hit you with every headline in the entire world that has to do with Fukushima, which is uh, what I did yesterday. Um, I want to focus on these four stories, and I want you to absorb exactly what it is that I'm saying to you low def live here high def if you're not live you might want to find it on the correct views uh, YouTube I want you to absorb what you're hearing here and I want you to share it share it on Facebook share it on tumblr nobody's on tumblr but me but I'm sure I'll see it uh, share it on tumblr share it everywhere let people know what you're learning here let people know that this isn't the pie in the uh, pie in the sky notion I don't like the guy in the hat, man. He's got, like, tattoos, and he doesn't know what he's talking about. Never mind that every piece of information I'm going to give you is sourced. This is political commentary. I am giving you commentary on what is already written. I'm not a reporter. I, I've done reporting. I should say that this show, I am a reporter. This show is not a reporter's show. This show is political commentary. So when I tell you something, it's not my opinion. I am doing commentary on what has already been stated as fact. And I don't want that to get lost because people will tune in or click on the videos and then think, well, who is he to know all of this? As if they somehow miss all of these sources that prove to you that what I'm saying is true. So I wanted to address that. Because, again, I'm not a physicist, but I can read what a physicist writes. I have been to college. I have graduated. I know how to read a physics paper. I'm not an idiot. I'm giving you information that in many instances is being uh, denied you in the mainstream media. And it's being watered down by corporations that are tied into General Electric, or which are the people that melted down the plant. So they have an invested interest in not giving you the truth. Me? I have very few sponsors. Sticker Junkie's one of them. I've got no reason to lie to you, friends. I'm not getting any money from anybody that's got a dog in this race, but I am letting you know that Fukushima is greatly diminishing your quality of health. So do me a favor and share this video. Thank you. Um, this is NDTV.com. Japan warned to stay vigilant for the big one after powerful earthquake. Now, this is only May 31st, 2015. So you people that heard similar stories to this prior, this is only the 3rd of June. This is a, another story about a different problem from the one that you already heard. This is not me re reporting on what was already commented on prior. No. This is another instance. Tokyo. Seismologists today warned Japan to stay vigilant for the next big one after a powerful 7.8 magnitude earthquake hit off the coast of the quake-prone nation, injuring a dozen people. Buildings swayed for around a minute in Tokyo and its vicinity Saturday night as the quake struck at a remote spot in the Pacific Ocean around 542 miles south of the capital, the U.S. Geological Survey said. That's 874 kilometers for those of you out of the U.S. I hate kilometers, by the way. Despite its power, there was no risk of a tsunami and its epicenter was a deep the 676 kilometers grr, below the Earth's surface, the USGS and the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center said. Twelve people were injured, including a 56-year-old man who broke his ribs, but no one was killed. The reason that this matters, and the reason that I want to mention this so much, is 
you're hearing people say that they want to reopen some of the nuclear power plants that are in Japan. This is a terrible idea. Don't you understand that the same tectonic movements, the plates in the earth, if you don't know what that is, it's what causes earthquakes. The tectonic motions in the world in that part, that region of the world, I should say, are still as active and are still doing the same things that led to the earthquake and tsunami that caused the meltdowns melt out and melt through. That's why there's radiation getting in your food, in your rainwater. If you're one of these off-the-grid living people, by the way, I support your cause, but if you're drinking rainwater, you have a pumpkin for a head. You really do. That is not a good idea. Don't tell me you're filtering it. They can't even filter out things like tritium, so don't tell me it's being filtered. Don't drink rainwater. And why? Why can't you do these things? Why can't you eat mushrooms? Because they absorb radiation like a sponge. And where is it coming from? Thank you, TEPCO. Thank you. That's General Electric for poisoning everything for everyone just so you can have these plants. And we covered on the last show, and we've covered on many shows. It was yesterday. You can look it up. This is an ongoing thing that they want to they want to open this before they've even properly addressed the problems from the last one that they opened and they were warned they were warned in advance they were warned by liberals and conservatives they were warned by scientists they were warned by everyone but what they did is uh, that they decided that the bottom line was worth more than the lives of you and your family and all the people that are going to be sickened by this. And don't let yourself get pulled into this false notion that it's not going to be you, it's going to be somebody else. This is poisoning you right now. Um, what can you do to prevent it? Nothing. What can, you do, do, what can you do to prevent some of it? Look up how to almost never get sick. It's on my page. It's free. It's another one of my videos. Uh, I've given you some of the knowledge I have that can prevent some of this damage all in one video so that I don't have to reiterate each time. But on the bigger scale, there isn't much that you can do. And th this is what they've done. Now, wh why am I reporting on it then? Maybe it doesn't matter. Um, why am I doing it? Because if you know about it, you can do some things to help yourself. For one thing, you can stop eating things like mushrooms, uh, cheese, things from California. You can pull your money out of investment stocks in Westinghouse, in GE, and TEPCO, and uh, these these people that are encouraging this kind of technology to be thrust upon us. Um, if you're in a mutual fund, if one of the energy companies in it are involved in nuclear energy, pull your money out of that mutual fund, put it into an infrastructure fund, invest in gold, platinum, silver, anything to bring this to an end. You can vote for more libertarian constitutional candidates. Why do I say that? Because they don't want to subsidize. They don't want to give these special tax breaks to these companies or any companies. Well, nobody would insure a nuclear power plant because if they melt down, they cost billions of dollars. So if they weren't subsidized, subsidized they wouldn't exist. So you don't have to vote for the Green Party and Jello Biafra, I love you, but you are wrong. You don't have to vote for Green Parties. Love you, Highland Caldercott. You're wrong. You can vote Libertarian, and that will shut this down. Uh, you can vote, we well, hate Libertarians. Vote for anybody that's not in favor of subsidies, and it will do the same thing, even if you're a socialist watching me. Um, I don't care who you vote for. It just It's going to be hard to find a socialist that doesn't like subsidies. But if you can stop the subsidies, you can stop the nuke plants from opening because they're so dangerous and so deadly and so expensive that they are uninsurable. RT, May 29th, of Japan volcano eruption triggers highest alert, locals evacuation. There's a video on this here at RT. A sudden volcano eruption on the small southern Japanese island of Kuchinirabu, Jima, 
was forced, it should be iChart, has forced authorities to raise the alert to the highest level and advise evacuation of the immediate area. Residents have fled by boat to the nearest neighboring island. Now, obviously, it's the 3rd of June. My point is that we are proving again and again that the Fukushima earthquake was not an isolated incident. Authorities decided to evacuate, evacuate the island's 137 residents, NHK National Television reported, says that the residents fled by boat to the closest neighboring island of Yukashima one hour away. All that I could bring were a few emergency goods. It was utter chaos, one man told Fuji TV. I'm really worried about things back home. Yeah, because uh, Chernobyl, it was an incident where they took people away and they never got to get their stuff back. Um, it happened, and there's still, I think there's, I think there's still all these years later, people still in evacuation shelters from Fukushima. And, of course, they can never get their stuff back, and they wouldn't want to, because if they were to do so, they would be juiced by it. GE, they bring such good things to life. Uh, Mount Shindaki, it looks like Shindake, but I bet you it's Shindaki, suddenly erupted around 10 a.m. local time. It was sending a large plume of black smoke some 9,000 meters into the sky. The Japan Meteorological Agency has issued a level 5 warning for the area the highest on its scale. And you could tell that this article was written in a hurry because there's typos all over it here at uh, uh, Prison Planet. It's not Prison Planet's articles, it's RT. You could tell they were typing this as fast as they could get the information. So you can pick up things like that if you're into journalism and you can tell that there were people that were in a big hurry here. A pyroclastic flow of gas, which uh, again has it did worse things to neighboring Pompeii back in the day than actually Pompeii got. What that is is a, I think it's like a thousand degrees Celsius. I like Celsius about as much as a kilometers, but we'll go with it. It was about a thousand degrees Celsius, and what it did was literally burnt the entire body away into nothing in mere seconds as the, uh, the the flow of gas went over. That's what they're talking about here. A pyroclastic flow of gas and rock flowed down Mount Shindaki and reached the ocean, thankfully, instead of a village. According to authorities who warned of the possibility of further large-scale eruptions and called for extreme caution, there was a huge bang and a black smoke arose up immediately in Nabauki Hayashi, an island official told NHK Television. Does this sound, sound to you like it, these earthquakes ended in uh, 2011 and the volcanic eruptions, which can also lead to such things as tsunamis, depending on its severity? Does it look like it's ended to you? Because maybe I'm reading this wrong, but it certainly doesn't look like it has ended to me. It sounded like dynamite had exploded and the house shook, a resident of TV Ashahi. So that means that that resident agrees with me. A 72-year-old man suffered burns to his face after being caught in the pyroclastic flow. Well, obviously it must have been cooler than Pompeii's. But you guys get my point. It's a remote island located fairly far away from any heavily populated area. It's 160 kilometers south of Sende Nuclear Plant, which is another nuclear plant, located on Japan's southernmost island of Kyushu. There were no reports of irregularities at the plant falling volcanic activity. Well, good. They dodged a bullet this time, and I'm happy to report that millions more aren't uh, further poisoned from this. I'm happy, okay? I don't want people dying. My point is that it's still a happening, and if you are supporting the nuke industry, or at least if you are not fighting the nuke industry as I am all the time, then you are part of the problem. I've got two stories for you left, friends. Um, I just want to remind you that The Correct Views is brought to you by Mike McLaughlin. He's a writer. Do you know how happy I am to have a writer as a sponsor of the show? Reading is a dying art, I fear. Uh, I don't fear, I know. And uh, somebody very close to me buys books all the time because she collects books from the author. She doesn't ever read any of them. You know, I play video games on my phone. And the books, like, collect dust. I... Thankfully, some people still read. And if you do, then do me a favor. Mike McLaughlin. Um, you know how to spell Mike, don't you? M-I-K-E? I hope uh, Kesha fans needed some help there. Yep, the E is silent. Uh, McLaughlin. M-A-C-L-A-U-G-H-L-I-N. 
Look him up on Facebook. He does poetry. He does political rants. He does some of the best fiction you will ever read. Mike McLaughlin. Friends, that brings us to uh, IntelliHub, Alex Thomas. Massive Dirty Bomb exercise set for June. Well, this was dated May 31st, so it is now June. We are clearing up an undeniable buildup to a so far unknown event. Now, I am not against this. Because while I don't like the world around me, I don't like ISIS, I don't like beheadings and nuclear attacks, I don't like Russia provoking the Ukraine, I don't like the Ukraine provoking Russia. The point is, somebody sooner or later is going to hate us enough to threaten us and possibly poison us with nuclear weaponry. Be it a dirty bomb, which I call a glorified... Uh, a cesium on a grenade, if you will, to actual nuclear weaponry. And things like suitcase nukes are much harder and more cumbersome to actually use than people think they are. But sooner or later, someone uh, in all likelihood is going to pull this off. Hopefully never in my lifetime, God willing. So I'm happy that the government is doing something to figure out how to save some people. Uh, there was a massive failure up and down the West Coast when Fukushima melted down. Potassium iodide tablets here at 420 in the morning should have been passed out to everyone, and they weren't. Potassium iodide does not protect you from all nuclear uptakes, but it does greatly protect your thyroid. Uh, they weren't given out. So... Preparation for this kind of thing is always good. But I also want to report on it and comment on it, I should say, because it highlights the fact that the government knows, they know, that this, there's a likelihood of this. They can't even pretend that they, they don't. They're taking it seriously. So if you're listening to me and you're not taking it seriously, then I don't know, maybe you don't care about your health and your family's health. If you do, then you'll share this video. A massive simulated dirty bomb attack exercise is said to take place at the end of June in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Operation Northern Exposure will include over 1,000 Michigan National Guard soldiers and will be the first time in history that local authorities have worked in the National Guard. I'll tell you one thing, I would be terrified to be in the National Guard and have to deal with something like this because the government is grossly unprepared to do so. And we know this by other Fukushima reports. You can search me online. I do them every month. We've given you proof here. Christelle and I have shown you the proof, my behind-the-scenes queen, of how the USS Ronald Reagan had our men and women on deck extremely close to the downwind of Fukushima as it melted down and did nothing to protect them. And their lives are just, again, this is 2015, it was 2011. Their lives now are cancer-ridden in just that amount of time. They are sick beyond reason. And this is what our government did to them. So if you're in the National Guard and you get sent to one of these meltdowns or nuclear attacks of some kind, my God, I'll be praying for you. You're like one of the Fukushima 50. You don't know what that is. Look it up, too. It's, it's grim. According to WoodTV.com, the drill will use a city landfill as the site for the simulated dirty bomb attack and a middle school for the decontamination center. So they're going to have a decontamination center and a middle school. If they ever do that, don't ever go back to that middle school. Um, and if you doubt me on that, then ask Dr. Chris Busby. You can find him on Facebook. I don't know him, but I've read him. Ask Chris Busby if I'm wrong. I'll send you straight to the doctor. I guarantee he'll agree with me. If they use a middle school as a decontamination center, don't ever, ever, ever go back into that building. You don't want to hear it? They'll say, oh, look, it's safe. Yeah, maybe they're testing for alpha, not beta and gamma. Don't ever go back in that building. I'm not kidding. The public may notice more military vehicles in the area, as well as helicopters bringing crews to and from the site. But the general public won't be impacted. Local officials said traffic in the area won't be affected. Hoping to quell any public fears, Kent, Count, fears, Kent County Emergency Management Director Lieutenant Jack Stewart told Wood TV that it's all off the beaten path. 
There are no public highways involved other than the transportation to and from the site. They're even taking utility workers and getting them involved in what they call a dirty bomb scenario or a nuclear radiation type scenario. Uh, and this is reported by uh, Dabu777. So, thankfully, anyway, all things nuclear are not being ignored. Now, I'm not saying I always trust the government to do the right thing, but let's face it. We don't want our government to be, well, what do we do now <laughs> if something like this were to happen? And we've reported on how the nuclear material has been stolen repeatedly, especially in Mexico. It's like a holiday there, trick-or-treating and nuclear stealing day. All it takes is um, somebody who's not just a common thief, but maybe a member of ISIS, to steal one of these things. Or the common thief steals it and inadvertently or purposefully sells it to somebody in ISIS. Um, you get some cesium, you get some radioactivity from an x-ray machine perhaps, and you blow it up in Times Square, you've got a significant problem. So it is very good that America is at least announcing that they are testing this. It says, this massive dirty bomb exercise is yet another military local law enforcement drill announced in the lead of Jade Helm. Jade Helm, I think, raises different fears. This, I'm sorry, I'm not against this. We need to be prepared for such a scenario. The National Guard troops need to know the kind of detriment that they're going to be looking at if they have to deal with this. I am in favor of this. I don't have a problem with it as I'm seeing it right now. In the last two months, we have seen literally over a dozen military drills either take place or to be announced. This is happening at the same time as a huge amount of seemingly random military movements are being documented throughout the country. The article tends to take sort of a grim look at this. I'm sorry, I am happy to see this happening because in my in my understanding of things, and I've talked about this when I made the Bilderberg movie, look up Bilderberg, why it mattered to me, Alex Jones, Mark Dice, everybody's in it. Look up what I was saying, that we were not prepared, our food was not tested, we were not prepared for Fukushima. So I'm very happy to see that we are doing something to prepare for it now. And guys, what I want to get to, the dumdy of the day! The dumdy of the day today isn't going to any one person, but it's going to a group of people. And I'll tell you who that group of people is. It's a group of people who somehow don't know how to read. And I'll tell you why I'm saying this. Are, are there any Christians listening to me? Great. I won't be talking to you for a second, even though I'm one of you. Are you not a Christian? Okay, that is fine. Let me ask you a question. Are you a mechanic? Most of you know. Okay, good. If you read a diagnostic manual and it says that this is how you fix your fill in the blank, do you believe that it's true when you try it? You do follow the directions, you use the tools, you buy the parts, you do it properly, and guess what? Your car's fixed. Okay. You don't have to be a Christian to tell that John in the book of Revelation was a prophet. Maybe you say, you know what, Sammy, I just don't believe that Christ is God. Well, that's a topic for another show. But you cannot deny any more than you could deny the, the repair manual analogy that I gave you with the car. You can't deny whether something is right or something is wrong. And it is absolute fact that what we are seeing in Revelation and the predictions from the book of Revelation, whether or not you believe in Christ or not, is in fact accurate. And with that in mind, I want to address this and dedicate it to all the people who think that just because they're not Christians that the prophet John was an idiot. They were two different people, by the way. You might believe in Nostradamus. Why can't you believe in John? Because John's got a lot higher batting average. Your, yournewswire.com, could Fukushima be the wormwood of biblical time? Now, I've been saying for a long time, I thought it was one of the plagues, because one of the plagues in the book of Revelation talks about a third of the waters being poisoned, 
we see the Pacific Ocean in horrible condition, much worse than is being reported by most people. We're seeing radioactivity in all of our tuna. It looks to me, Pacific Ocean, if you look at the planet as a map, it's roughly a third of the waters. Let's hope I'm wrong, because then a third of the people die. But look at the number of um, precancerous lymph nodes that we're finding in Japan, even here at just 2015. Well, we have this asking if it could be wormwood. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to ask you to convert to Christianity on my show. I hope you do, but it's not up to me to make you do it. What's up to me to do here at The Correct Views is to show you what it is that was predicted and what it is that you're seeing around you. And you decide, because I'm not a prophet. I'm really, really good if you give me one little fact of telling you where the next 10 facts are going to go. I'm probably better at that than anybody you've ever met. But I'm really not a prophet. So I'm going to give you the facts, and I'll let you decide. I'm asking for one thing, an open mind. Leave me a comment when I'm done on what you think of this segment. Radiation from the Fukushima nuclear plant in Japan keeps pouring into the Pacific Ocean and killing wildlife. That would be roughly a third of the waters. The media either does not report the gravity of the worst disaster in human history, again, Chris Busby, or chooses to play it down. It is not surprising that the corporations responsible for the disaster, General Electric, are closely linked to the media companies, defense contractors, pharmaceutical companies, big oil, and big surveillance industrial complex. We've covered exactly what all of those people are on this show. It is not grouping people into one group. We have named names in prior shows. Not to mention the real big bankers who help finance these disastrous projects with the help of their subservient politicians who rely on them for campaign donations. So you've got GE that gives money to big corporations. You've got big corporations that get subsidies, which is glorified tax breaks, to make the uninsurable insurable, as I mentioned earlier. And you've got a prediction that the love of money is the root of all evil. What's the root of all evil? I don't know. Maybe poisoning a third of the waters. How about that? That seems evil to me. What, you don't believe in Christ? That's fine. Does it sound evil to you? Because I hope it does, whether or not you believe in Christ or not. The destroyers of life and its sanctity could be the above corporations and their colleagues who expect humanity's surrender and be mesmerized by their arrogance, wickedness, stupidity, and selfishness while they carry the day with their apocalypse, including end of days, anti-human hocus-pocus, trivial propaganda nonsense. In other words, watching Rome burn while you look at the circus, to use the famous analogy. All for the sake of a quick buck, all because they want your tax dollars, they are willing to poison you and your loved ones. While feeding the public austerity, which is welfare, disinformation, disease, and death. Exactly. You wouldn't need welfare if they hadn't outsourced your future away. The Pacific, that would be the ocean, has survived many natural events like earthquakes and asteroids. Yeah, you know, remember the asteroid that we know we can find the hole? The asteroid that took out the dinosaurs? It sent a cloud into the sky for a long time. Very little sunlight to help the, uh, the one-celled organisms breed. And guess what? Somehow the ocean still survived. But yet now, man has managed to make it so that we don't really know that that's going to happen. It says it is dying now because of TEPCO and General Electric. The end of days is real for the billions of sea creatures washing up dead around the Pacific Ocean. Guess what? I don't know if those fish were Christians or not, but they died just the same, didn't they? The cores of the nuclear power plants that were damaged during the 2011 tsunami earthquake are yet to be accounted for. It has been revealed that the people responsible for the safety and cleanup of the damaged reactors are still using the old Windows XP computers connected to the Internet. 
these are now vulnerable to cyber attacks because the lack of support from Microsoft. If I'm not mistaken, Microsoft uh, did extend uh, their updates for such things, but I'm not sure. So I'm not sure they're right on that. We're being fair here at the correct views. It's not the correct opinions. Um, they might be right opinions. The radiation from the Pacific will eventually reside in most forms of life on the planet. That is absolute fact. That's scientific fact given to my many doctors. Um, I think it's important to note that hooking up a computer to the internet or putting anything onto a uh, USB drive that has been on the internet into a nuclear computer is a disaster. There are ways to upload code where you do not have to do that. If you wish to know how, leave it in my comment line. Otherwise, I'm going to tech bore everybody to death and nobody will listen to the end of the show. It says, we are already in the post-apocalyptic era and shall learn to live with the atom at our core. Maybe the pharmaceuticals will provide the remedy to our ills. Maybe, in other words, maybe drugs will help us get this out of our system. Because currently we have no idea how to do it beyond bentonite clay, which is not a cure-all. And the industrialists with scientists in their payroll will receive or recreate the fish and clean the waters. Maybe the media will inform us when the time comes for us to be concerned, or maybe not. And friends, what that, what that there describes is the following mess. It says, they write, not everyone believes in the Bible. However, a passage notes that toward the end of times, Many men died from the waters because they were made bitter. The story of Fukushima is one that started several years ago, and of course it goes into it being one of the worst man-made disasters ever, and it goes over many things that we've covered before, so we'll skip that paragraph. Suffice it to say, it's dreadful. And again, yournewswire.com, Fukushima Wormwood, you'll find it. As we recall, the Fukushima nuclear complex was the epicenter of a perfect storm that witnessed both earthquake and tsunami, and of course they melted it down and have not been able to stop the melting now. It says, following an investigation by Japan's board audit, TEPCO has been told to upgrade its computer systems. TEPCO operates on more than 48,000 PCs, all running Windows XP. Again, I, I'm pretty sure that Microsoft has dealt with this, but it's interesting. Uh, I'm not sure of it. It says, are these old and outdated internet-connected computers being used in mission to critical capacity? In other words, are they hacker-proof? If TEPCO is refusing to update computer software simply as a means of saving money, what other corners are they cutting? I think they don't want to do that because they don't want to disrupt the computers by putting another operating system on it. But I have a degree in IMT. I don't think this author did it says a recent study, this is much more important, of animals in the Pacific Ocean from the Uni of Colorado in conjunction with Fukushima University noted, quote, photos show bodies riddled with tumors, eyes bleeding, covered in lesions, some with missing testicles, eyeballs, skin disintegrating, peeling off, and turning yellow. Does that sound like woe from the fish gate to you? Because I do believe that's in the Bible. Boils, lesions, pains, end of days, don't really have to believe in Christ to know that, hey, you know what, I'm seeing it. He predicted it. It's happening. It's not a coincidence. It's not happening out of order, which would be what a coincidence is. It's happening exactly as predicted. Another study from the Uni of Alaska saw problems with the reproductive system, endocrine system, mucoskeletal system, respiratory and digestive systems. Major publications are mentioning it. National Geographic, not exactly a Christian publication by any stretch of the imagination, noted that billions of blue jellyfish walk, wash up on American beaches. In recent weeks, about a billion, with a B, jellyfish like purple sailors have washed up on the West Coast beaches. Dead Velila stretch as far as the eye can see, perhaps as many as a billion, experts say. The Smithsonian recently ran a story that noted birds are in a tailspin four years after the Fukushima. Like the proverbial canary in the coal mine, data show that bird species in abundance are in sharp decline. 
and the situation is getting worse. Why? Because birds fly so far, if they land where radioactive contamination is and they fly to a nest, they bring that radio contamination to the nest in their feathers, and then of course it's spread by other birds all over, and that's why you're seeing that. It says, um, it's much hotter, that's radioactivity, wherever it's hotter, it's dead silent. You see one or two birds if you're lucky. Birds such as the carrion crow demonstrated a higher susceptibility. Again, they're eating dead things and that's why, because the dead things might have died from things like radionuclear poisoning. They're finding birds with cataracts, tumors, asymmetries, developmental abnormalities. In other words, they're ripped. Their entire species is being ripped apart. Local news in America has also reported on strange occurrences. East Bay Express noted that sardines have declined to their lowest level in six decades. What? You don't have to be a Christian to realize that your sardines are more expensive and the ones you're eating barely made it out alive and you're juicing yourself. While the Tillamook Herald featured a speaker talking about the current crash in the food web, which has led to significant mortality in birds, again, sea lions, and other marine life. Another local news organization, <coughs> excuse me, KSBW.com ran a story noting, quote, volunteers who track animals say that they think the colony of harbor seals is being affected by this year's food shortage. What's causing the food shortage? Maybe the mass die-off in the ocean. What do you think? Monitors say the pupping season for, uh, of course, sea lions got off to an early and difficult start this year with more seal pups being abandoned than normal. Why? Because the mothers can't feed them and they don't know what to do. And it isn't just smaller forms of sea life. The bigger animals are being affected as well. It's says CBS San Francisco just ran a story headlined Hat Tip Savage, Mysterious Whale Deaths, Four Carcasses Wash Ashore, NorCal Beaches This Month. In that story, it was noted that lab officials, for those of you that say that I don't give sources, are investigating the deaths of two gray whale carcasses that washed up this week in the Santa Cruz County. This latest 